Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the beautiful city of Revere. <laughs> We're honored today to be joined by Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Augustus, and Secretary Howe. The Healy-Driscoll administration continues to be an incredible partner to the city, and we admire their dedication to public service. Revere is in the midst of an exciting transformation. Whether along our historic beach or here at Suffolk Downs, the city continues its positive momentum. We couldn't do it without the support of the Commonwealth and specifically the One Stop for Growth program. This program provides valuable resources to guide our planning efforts, improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods, and support economic development in the city. This year, because of the leadership of Governor Haley and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and countless other, others in attendance today, the City of Revere will receive close to $5.1 million in eight different grants for, the, for our community. Thank you. Our largest award we'll receive is for the Mass Works, totaling over $4 million. This grant will be instrumental in addressing critical infrastructure to help us meet our needs as a growing community. These infrastructure upgrades enhance safety, connectivity, and economic development, making our city a better place to live and do business. It will fund improvements at four key locations, including Winthrop Ave at Revere Beach Parkway and Harris Street intersections, Route 60 at Charger and Sigourney Streets, Route 1A in Railroad Avenue, and Route 60 in Har the Harris Street pedestrian crossing. All part of a comprehensive package of off-site mitigation work for the Suffolk Downs project. The Mass Work grants for infrastructure improvements offer a multitude of economic benefits, benefits to our city, including job creation, increased local spending, business growth, improved property values, and long-term economic sustainability. We're thrilled for our partners at the Neighborhood Developers, who received an Urban Agenda grant through Revere Works. At one point, Revere had, had the second highest unemployment rate in the state. And after launching Revere Works, in partnership with TND, our unemployment rate decreased rapidly proving that this programming really works. This is a major step forward in our commitment to creating jobs, developing a skilled workforce, and strengthening our community. We're thankful for this grant and the continued support from our state, which enables us to make a real difference in the lives of our residents. It's through partnerships with the governor and her team that have allowed Revere to continue as the fastest growing city in our commonwealth. As a gateway city, we need to support a diverse resident and business population. This is what makes Revere special. The governor and her team recognize how these grants continue to move our city forward, and we extend a heartfelt thank you to Governor Haley for her unwavering support and the commitment to our city and dedication to making the commonwealth a better place to live work and thrive. And I'm extremely grateful and humbled to introduce our governor and our friend, Mara Haley. Well, good morning. Good morning, Revere, all who love Revere. Um, and all who are here today, we are, I, the LG and I are so psyched to be here with our team this morning. This is a great Thing to be able to do, to be able to make this announcement um, and through the great work of the legislature and our partners and our team and the administration and make sure that money is going out the doors to communities for stuff that we need to do, stuff that is going to make a meaningful difference in the lives of residents and in the viability, livability of our great communities. So it's a great day, and I'm psyched to see so many people. We have so many wonderful electeds who will all acknowledge. We appreciate your partnership big time. We have so many folks who are here from the development community. Um, thank you, thank you for the vision. I know it's not an easy time. 
uh, we've got this inflation and we've got costs and, you know, you're trying to figure out the math and making it all work, but we appreciate your commitment to Massachusetts. And then we got a lot of people who build stuff. And I'm glad that trucks are still moving, even during this press conference, because no Tom and everybody, no time off. We want this done. It's great. So thank you to all of our folks in labor who are here and for the work that not only the work that you're doing, the work that you're going to keep doing, it's, um, it's, it's really, really great. Um, all right, I'm going to get in trouble here, but I know I want to acknowledge and thank Mayor Keith for his leadership, for his partnership. Don't hide. Ah. Um, all of our local leaders and economic development and housing officials from communities, from the administration. We have so many uh, wonderful folks here. You'll hear from Tom O'Brien um, from HYM and uh, of the development and business community. Members of our team, as I mentioned, Lieutenant Governor, our fabulous Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus, our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, our Undersecretary of Economic Development, Ashley Stola, and their teams. Uh, Dan Rivera, he can't be here today, uh, but sends his uh, regrets. And the Mass Development team, who worked uh, and who are our partners in moving Massachusetts communities forward. And uh, terrific electeds. Um, I want to thank, and let me see, we've got, we've got Mayor Christensen is here. Mayor Nicholson is here. Mayor Ballantyne is here. You've got to help me out. Yeah. Senator Tarr is here. Representative Chan. Representative Turco. Representative Giannino. Uh, Representative Arena. Okay, we've got Representative Lipper Garabedian is here. Uh, I know I'm missing people. No, I, I got Arena. I got Arena. Yeah, I got. I got I, I, oh, did I not mention rep, the great representative, Tacky Chan, who came from the South Shore to the North Shore to be here today? That's how important this is. Woo! Representative Jerry Paracella, Representative Don Shan. I know there are others among you. We love you all. And the LG, be sure to name check everybody, okay? Yeah, you got? Tazner. Oh my God, Representative Kasner, my God, we're looking right at you. I know. Thank you. you said Thank you. Get in trouble. I am. That's why you're here. Make sure keep me out of trouble. Okay. So um, the reason why it's important to acknowledge everybody is because everybody is part of this victory. Okay. We appreciate the allocation uh, and the investment by the legislature. We appreciate those who are on the ground looking to implement our mayors and local officials and the economic uh, development and housing and planning teams. And we really appreciate folks in our administration you know, who are the ones administering and working with our cities and towns to get this done. We're here to announce $164 million in economic development grant awards that we're going to go to cities and towns all across this great state. These are going to support commercial investment. They're going to create great jobs, which is awesome. And they're projects, importantly, many of them, that are going to unlock housing production for more affordable homes. The number one issue confronting our state right now, housing, housing, housing. Together, these grants will make a more affordable, livable, competitive, and equitable Massachusetts. We awarded these grants through the Community One Stop for Growth Portal, which is a combination of 18 different grant programs, all streamlined into one portal, um, and uh, it really eases the way we are able to get money out the door. It's a vehicle for partnership, supporting our communities, and it's one that our team uh, not only came in believing in, but wanting to really expand, wanting to expand. Uh, these programs, it's awesome, the plan, it's good stuff. Yeah. The, plan, the programs, they include MassWorks, um, which support the infrastructure projects. We're here today at this emerging new neighborhood at Suffolk Downs because part of it is being catalyzed by a $4 million MassWorks infrastructure grant. Um, Tom's going to talk all more about that, but, you know, this is an example of uh, private investment, working together in public partnership, and it's going to bring about transformational change for not just this community and neighborhood, but for this region. Our one-stop grant programs are going to do this for communities across Massachusetts. Um, three, three and a half million for wastewater collection in Yarmouth, critical for economic development and environmental health. It's an upgrade that's going to unlock new development, creating 350 new jobs, 200 homes, and 120 hotel and motel units. That's just in Yarmouth. I was there yesterday. It's a big deal for Yarmouth. Not as big as Revere, um, but the, the, all are big deals. I'm saying it's a smaller place. 
Um, and they really need wastewater treatment. Um, we're also awarding $2 million to North Adams, right? $2 million to North Adams for the Blackington Infrastructure Project. This is going to reclaim an old tannery. Um, it's gonna, we're going to have landscaped green space, uh, parking area. It's important public infrastructure for that region. And these are the kinds of things that MassWorks supports. Now, we loved MassWorks so much that Ed and Yvonne said, we got to expand this, okay? So we're going to create a new housing works program modeled off the same idea because we know how important housing is. So um, we've got housing works. We funded it $25 million this year. We're proposing another $170 million investment through the Affordable Homes Act, which we need to get done, our housing bond bill. Let me tell you what that means or what it could mean awarding um, $4.5 million in a Housing Works grant to Medfield. That's something that's happening, $4.5 million. It's going to make possible the development of the former Medfield State Hospital into 334 mixed-income homes. That's awesome. Another $2.75 million for a mile-long sideway upgrade in Pepperell. Um, it's going to connect a proposed senior affordable housing project to the downtown, unlocking another 40 homes. In Brockton, we've got almost $3 million going to the Brockton Housing Authority to upgrade utility and site infrastructure and support the private development of 400 additional housing units. These are examples of this stuff, okay, and why it's a big deal and why we all got to rally to support it and get shovels in the ground, money out the door, shovels in the ground as quickly as possible. We've got a lot of uh, awards that we're celebrating today across the board from our rural communities and small towns uh, to our urban centers, and we're really, really psyched about it. So again, I just want to thank everybody who's come together in partnership. Speaking of partnership, uh, I am personally so lucky, and we are truly lucky as a Commonwealth to have an absolutely fantastic Lieutenant Governor and Kim Driscoll, who you know knows firsthand about how to get things done, particularly when it comes to improving our communities, making those investments, doing the planning, right, and making it happen. So I'm really uh, psyched to be able to bring to you now our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thanks, Gov. Hey, this is my kind of Wednesday. Just want to say that. This is, uh, it's great to be with so many of you. Governor, thanks for getting us all fired up. This work really, really matters. And Mayor, always great to be in Revere, especially as we see all this work underway. You know, good cities and the opportunity to make the investment in vibrancy and development it just doesn't happen by accident. And these projects, this funding, the ability to work together, the synergy that's required, it's really hard. Uh, all of our local officials have spent time in public meetings building consensus, trying to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward, ensuring that as the developments happen, they're good for our communities. There's green space and affordable housing and, and the infrastructure demands that we have. If you're a local official, can you stand up right now? Or a former mayor and Kevin Dumas, thank you for the work you're putting in. Every single day, shared vision, collaboration, hard work, it really matters. And it doesn't happen unless we've got somebody building these projects. And I know we've got a number of our folks, men and women in the trades, every day who get up early, work hard, and make sure we're getting the best developments we can in Massachusetts. Thank you for being here. My husband's one of you, all right? Up early, to bed early, <laughs> all of that. And we can't do it unless we have folks who are willing to really uh, put the pieces together to make it work. It is not easy trying to get, grab the capital, design the projects, work with local officials, make sure they're penciling out. We've got great developers in the Commonwealth who make sure that it's not only a deal that's going to make money, but it's going to make a good community. So stand up if you're here from the development community. We're in partnership with all of you. Don't be afraid. I see you, Sal. All right. Thank you. Tom, others. Cultivating and creating that opportunity and that environment for investment is so critical because we rely on new tax revenues, on jobs, to ensure that we have the resources we need to pay for schools and public safety and parks. It's a symbiotic relationship, and that's why we're here today. These grants are part of that whole project work effort that makes it all happen. It's developing the jobs, it's building the communities, it's supporting the vibrancy, and it's doing it in Massachusetts, nearly 400 years old, which means most of what we're doing is redevelopment. It used to be something else. 
And oftentimes it left behind stuff in the ground that's not so great, which makes it harder. It also means we're changing our communities. We're leading that innovation. This space alone used to be places that we all visited and maybe placed a bet here or there is now going to be a place that's delivering jobs and labs and new innovative ways, is delivering the type of housing we need, is going to create green space, an opportunity to connect to transit, making sure that our communities aren't just thinking about their proud past, but their bright future. And these grants, the $164 million the governor mentioned, well, they're going to three 161 communities, 338 different grants. Think about that. That's almost half of the communities in the Commonwealth who are being helped with resources, <laughs> with resources that are going to be a force multiplier. Those ripples include that private investment, the jobs, that tax revenues, and that's going to serve us for many, many years to come. We know that we also want to make sure we've got an all of Commonwealth strategy. So 26% of the grants are located in rural or small towns, those tiny towns that have to do all the same things that big cities need to do, but oftentimes with less resources. 33% are gateway cities, places that are local, regional drivers of the economy. And 61% are in MBTA communities, places where we know we can do good quality transit-oriented development. And 49% are in communities that are leading us, housing choice communities that are leading us in housing production, doing their part. And we know overall these investments are going to lead to 8,000 new homes, 10,000 jobs, and 5.4 million dollars, uh, 5.4 million square feet of commercial development. Think about that. That's just one round of, of Community One Stop. And I will say to our community leaders, you're doing such a good job in giving us applications. Legislators, we're going to need some more money. <laughs> these grants were 500 percent oversubscribed, <laughs> which means we had to leave some good projects on the table. And uh, we want to make sure as we continue to fund these programs, we're really helping communities grow. So I hope you can see how fired up the governor and I are, all of our teams, Secretary Augusta, Secretary Howe, because for us, this is what the work involves, working together to create communities that matter, building a commonwealth that moves everyone forward, and doing so in a way that we can see the work up close and personal. We love going around the commonwealth seeing this happen, and we know with these projects, we're going to have lots of good things to see for months and years ahead. Congratulations to everyone getting an award today. And again, it, it doesn't happen unless we've got developers who are willing to risk it all. I always think of folks who are investing in my community when I was mayor as true partners. Right? They're putting down uh, you know, cold, hard cash in the future of a community. That takes risks. That takes chutzpah. It also takes partnership. And we couldn't ask for a better partner than Tom O'Brien and the work he's doing here. Tom? Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you, uh, Mayor Keefe. If I could just acknowledge right in the very beginning, Doug Manns, my partner from HYM. Doug and I have been working together on this project every day for five years. And then standing next to uh, Doug, the photographer, is our, our partner, Reverend Jeffrey Brown of My City of Peace. So we're doing, we're going to do another one of these projects on the other side of the city. Um, I also just want to quickly, if I could, acknowledge the men and women of the building trades who are here, uh, some of whom are, have come off the job. You can see them in the yellow T-shirts. We've got a great group of leaders from the building trades who are here as well. And as the governor pointed out, and the lieutenant governor pointed out, because she knows in her own household, these tradespeople show up. They show up every single day for work. And they even work during COVID, when many of the world, uh, world's employees were uh, working remotely and, and uh, at home. Tradespeople showed up every single day to build projects like this, big, beautiful projects. We just completed one in downtown Boston that will be the headquarters for State Street Bank Corporation. And we are really indebted to the tradespeople who show up every single day. Thank you to everybody who's here. If I could also just say thank you to the people of uh, the great city of Revere. When Doug and I purchased this together with our team, uh, this abandoned horse racing track a few years ago, the people of Revere welcomed us. And Revere's leadership was very clear with us. As the LG said, we do a lot of meetings, we do a lot of time, we spend a lot of time listening to people. And the Revere leadership was very clear with us. Revere wants commercial buildings. Revere wants jobs. Revere is very proud of its very strong school system. And as a result of that, Revere wants to build new school buildings. And all of this um, means that Revere no longer wants to be left out of the regional conversation that other cities, other neighboring cities get to be part of when it comes to new jobs 
and new tax revenue. It's a new day for Revere, and Revere wants to be right in the middle of that conversation in terms of all those new jobs and all that new tax revenue. And as a result of all this, and as a result of that leadership, Revere has a bright future, as Mayor Keefe said today, a future that is rooted in leadership. And that's the key word I think I wanted to just focus on today, if it's okay with you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, in the presence of Mayor Keefe and all the other elected officials who are here from the city of Revere. Leadership is what has made this city be in position for this bright future, because Mayor Keefe and the elected officials from Revere here know that job growth, tax growth, and all of these investments, all of these goals, I'm sorry, require investments. Investments in infrastructure, investments in commercial projects, and these are fundamentally investments in people. And all of the men and women here today from the building trades understand and are a testament to that investment. So these men and women, I would say, largely because they're here today and they speak with their feet every single day, when they, they know a leader when they see one. And they see leadership in Mayor Keefe, they see leadership in Governor Healy, they see leadership in Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and all the other electeds who are here, because this is what it takes to get projects done. Yeah. So thank you for that leadership. Thank you for all that you're doing to help us keep Massachusetts moving forward and creating opportunity for people. And now my job is to introduce our great Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. Oh. Yvonne. Wow, what a truly um, exciting moment. We have been talking about this day for a long, long time. It's a tremendous honor uh, to be with all of you here today. Um, I want to thank the mayor and, uh, and, uh, and Tom and our governor, lieutenant governor, and Secretary Augustus. Um, we love Team Revere and we love this project. And I look out in this crowd right now and I was just thinking, you know, the lieutenant governor and I were talking last night. A lot of other states are trying to compete. They're trying to catch up with us. But when, we, when I look around the folks who are here, our incredible legislators, our mayors, all of our folks in the community, all of the folks in the trades, our private sector developers, our state government, we are unstoppable when we work together as Team Massachusetts. This is the best of Team Massachusetts. Um, so thank you, everyone, and congratulations. It's a big moment. Um, and these, um, these, these one more grants, uh, one, uh, one stop grants um, and MassWorks grants, um, they, you know, there are a lot of numbers, you know, these millions of dollars, they seem like numbers, but actually they're real. And in my nine months on the job, I've had the um, incredible honor to get to go and visit some of the projects that have been funded. And I remember a couple of them, we've had people um, almost in tears as they thanked us and said that they would not have been able to revive their main streets. They would not have been able to start their businesses. They would not have been able to employ their teams without these grants. And so these are lots of numbers, lots of zeros, but actually they're hugely meaningful in people's lives across our state. So, um, so, so these are really important and it's a real moment to celebrate. Um, before I do all the details, I just want to do a special thank you for our team. Um, what folks may not know is that, so I came in the job in January, and people said, oh, there's this one-stop thing. We put all these programs together. The team in January started doing all these calls to educate towns and to work and coach people through applications. Then, the, then they closed in the early summer, and then the team worked tirelessly, and I, all through summer. I was in the office late Friday nights, early Monday mornings, all through the weekends to you know, evaluate and analyze, and, and then all through the fall to make these tough decisions. And this year was exceptional because we had more applications than ever before. And that didn't just happen on its own. So I just want to do a special shout out to our um, Undersecretary Stolba and also Juan and Helena and anybody who worked on these, these, uh, the process and the applications, please raise your hand. We have an amazing, amazing team. So thank you. We're very lucky in our state. Okay, so I'm like a nerdy Chinese woman. No one has ever compared me to Vanna White, but I have been told this is my Vanna White moment. So um, I get to read the list of all of the winners, and when, as I read your name, please come up, and we will all celebrate and take photos and congratulate you together. So um, we'll start with the town of Andover. Is anyone from Andover here? Barnstable, come up. Please, come up. Um, this is like the Oscars, but better. Um, <laughs> Barnstable, town of Barnstable. The town of Bedford, the town of Belchertown. Who's here from Belchertown? Um, city of Beverly, the town of Blandford. Where is Boston? Is Boston in the house? All right, let's get Boston here. Um, the town of Buckland, the town of Charlemont. Where is Charlemont? Come on up. The town of Cheshire, the town of Coleraine. 
the town of Dalton, Dudley, Easton, come on down, the city of Fall River, and the city of Fitchburg, the city of Framingham, the town of Great Barrington, the city of Haverhill, the town of Hawley, the town of Littleton, and we have Lowell. I know Lowell's in the house. Yay, Lowell. Um, the city of Lynn, Malden, Manchester by the Sea, town of Millbury, the town of Monroe, New Braintree, the city of North Adams. I know North Adams is here. Yay. All right, the town of North Andover. Northfield, Norton, the town of Oak Bluffs, the city of Quincy, Quincy, I've been corrected, Quincy, um, the town of Reading, the city of Revere, the town of Rowe, the town of Rowley, okay, Salem, woohoo! Yes, uh, town of Savoy, Shelburne, Sherborne, Somerville, I know Somerville's in the house, um, town of Southbridge, Tingsboro, Warwick, Wellfleet, the town of West Newberry, Worcester, and last but not least, the town of Yarmouth. All right, those are our winners. Congratulations, everyone. Okay, everybody, as you make your way back to the seats, we're going to welcome up our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. Um, this is really important. This is really important, and I just want to say something as you move to your seats. We know that there is no issue. The single greatest issue facing our state right now is the lack of availability and affordability of housing. It's why when we came in, we created for the first time ever a Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. And Ed has been after it with his team for the last nearly 150 days. You saw historic investments in housing in the budget. You saw uh, more work done through the historic and first time in over 20 years tax cut package we just passed, right, to make life more affordable, which is super important. That tax cut package is going to provide relief to working families, low income, seniors, renters, you name it. Importantly for this community, it also included really important credits and programs, tax incentives like the HDIP program, they're going to help spur and supercharge our housing production. So I just want to mention that because, you know, now we've got the context of the Affordable Homes Act, the house, uh, housing bond bill, which is super important. 
$4 billion, it's a big number for a reason, because the moment necessitates it. We must act, we must act quickly, okay, so that our state continue to move forward with positive economic growth and development. We want people coming to Massachusetts, staying in Massachusetts, but they can't stay here, they can't work here if they can't afford to live here. So it's pretty simple. And to make it happen, and I know we can make it happen, as Secretary Howe says, we're Team Massachusetts, we've got to come together and act with the intentionality and the urgency that this moment requires. So I want to introduce to you our great Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus. I, uh, I can be... Uh, brief, but I can't be short. So wh what she said, uh, I'm going to invite communities up uh, to do the same thing. And this round uh, is with our brand new inaugural Housing Works uh, program. So congratulations to all the communities that participated. Thanks to the team at HLC uh, and the team at Economic Development that worked together to make this happen. Uh, we're going to start with Barnstable. Yay, Barnstable. Boston Planning and Development Agency. Come on down. Brockton Housing Authority. Chelsea. Edgar Town. Rotten. Lemonster, Marlborough, Medfield, the Medford Housing Authority, the City of New Bedford, the City of North Adams, Pepperell, Wakefield, and last up but not least, the town of Upton. Well, this is going to wrap it up, but before you leave, I did want to once again thank, thank our friends and partners over at Suffolk Downs and HYM for de Development for hosting us today. And I welcome you all to Revere. Before you head home, take a ride down the beach, take a walk through our community, see, see how beautiful it is, show everyone how much you believe in this community, and thank you to the governor, the lieutenant governor, and our secretaries for being here this evening, afternoon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Come back when this is done. Yeah, you want to host you? Come back. Come on. It's so awesome to make this happen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.